All right, in this video, we're going to talk about how to connect to a Google Cloud Platform VM instance. And we're going to connect to this from our local machine using SSH. And there's two methods that we're going to use to connect. The first method that we're going to use is using a program called PuTTY. And what that is, is it's going to give us terminal access to this virtual machine. And the second method that we're going to go through is using a, a CyberDuck, which is a, an SFTP client, which is a file transfer client that we can use, use SSH to put files onto this, uh, onto this virtual machine. So those are the two methods that we're going to use. Um, and the, the first thing that you're going to need is actually a virtual machine on your Google Cloud platform. As you can see, I've already got that set up. It's connected to the internet with an external IP address. So make sure that you keep this window open because you're going to need to reference this IP address. And then, um, yeah, let's, let's get started. So uh, what I want you to do is go onto the internet and go to download the PuTTY software. Uh, because what this is going to do is allow you to create, um, it's going to allow you to create some, some key pairs that we're going to need for SSH. So go ahead and download this client. Once you have it downloaded, it's going to give you two pieces of software. The first piece of software is called Putty Gen, and the second piece of software is just called Putty. And the Putty software is what we use to connect to the server and the putty gen is what we use to create your key pair in order to connect. So we're going to, uh, first we're going to open up putty gen and generate this key. So you can see this piece of software right here. Let's click the generate button and then move your mouse around a whole bunch in order to create some entropy so that the key is sufficiently randomized. Okay. Now we've got this, uh, key right here. This is a public key. But let's look at this comment, see this key comment. We want to change this to a username and it doesn't matter what you pick, but uh, as far as for it to function. But what I like to do is since we're going to be putting this on our server, we need to I be able to identify this key and this will make sense a little bit further down the road. So right now the, the um, device I'm using is a laptop and it's running Windows. So, oh, spelled that wrong. Uh, so it's a laptop running Windows. And for our passphrase and our confirmed passphrase, I'm actually gonna leave these blank just because it makes things a little bit simpler. So let's, uh, let's save the private key, all right? It's gonna ask us to save it in a location. Uh, for our purposes, in, in when you're working on a Unix-based machine, the location that you save this key matters a little bit, but for Windows, it doesn't matter as much. So I like to put it in a location that makes sense. Um, and since it, on a lot of Unix machines, they save it in the .ssh folder underneath the user directory, that's where I like to put it in the Windows machine as well. So just go over to your users directory, pick the username and there should be a .ssh folder. If there's not a .ssh folder, you can create one or you can save it someplace different, uh, maybe like your desktop or something like that. For this, it doesn't really matter. Now, the file name um, in, it does, for, for Unix-based machines, the file name typically does matter, but since we're on Windows, it doesn't matter that much. So I'm gonna name it the same uh, name is the username that we just used. So I'm going to do laptop, laptop dash windows, D O W hoots, sorry. And then we're going to press save. All right. Now we let's uh, go check out that folder so that we can see it. Uh, it's going to be in your C users the user that you're currently using and SSH. So this is your, um, this is your private key file. Okay. Now going back to the putty key generator application, that is not, uh, this code that we see on the screen. What we see right here is actually our public key and this public key, we need to copy it 
and save it on our server. So we're gonna press this and we're gonna copy it. Come over here to our server. We're gonna click on the name of the server, which brings us to the server settings. And if you scroll down a little bit, you're going to see that there is a section for SSH keys. Now, uh, remember I told you that we created a username. You can see that I've already got two other SSH keys on here. In your case, you probably won't have any, but in my case, I do. So that's why this username is important, is because it's going to add this username for us. So let's go up and press the edit button on the compute engine, and then scroll back down to that SSH section, which is right under security and access. You can see the two other keys that I already have in here. So let's go ahead and add the new key that we just added, paste it in, and press the save button. Once that's done saving, you can see that our SSH key with that username is going to be added. I'll just wait patiently for that to, uh, that to complete. Looks like it's almost done. All right, now let's scroll back down and take a look at it. Now you can see we've got uh, three SSH keys, a MacBook, a Windows uh, work lap, and then a laptop Windows, which is the one that we just added. All right, now that we have that, let's go back. Uh, sorry, let's go back to the main uh, screen with our VM instances. And we can see that we have our external IP address. Let's copy that. Now, for our PuTTY application, we can close this. We don't need it anymore. And let's open the other PuTTY application, which is just PuTTY. Once this is opened, let's just reset to the default settings. Actually, I can delete, delete this and load the default settings. Oh, it looks like I saved over the, the default settings by accident. That's funny. All right, so under your sessions, uh, you're going to want to paste your IP address right here. Make sure it's on port 22, which it should be. That's the default setting. The next thing that you're going to do is come down here to the SSH section and expand that. Then go to Auth and Credentials. And then you're going to click the Browse button. And you want to browse for that, uh, that SSH key, private key that we had saved earlier, which is... In, um, it is on C, users, your username, and then SSH. If you saved it on your desktop, go to your desktop. We have that laptop Windows private key that we just created uh, using the, the Putty Gen application. So that's the second thing. The third thing is we need to go over to the connection data. And this is going to be the username that we created, which was laptop-windows. D-O-W-S. Don't know why I'm having a high time with that. Now, this is going to be the username for um, that, that we added when we created the key, right? And it needs to match the one that's on our, our uh, server as well. Now, what I like to do, you don't have to do this, but it's recommended, is you come up here, because all of your settings in the entire uh, config are saved right here. And I want to save those settings uh, let's name it laptop-windows. And this is going to be connecting to the Ubuntu server. To server. And this is just the name of the settings that we're having. So we'll save those. So every time we open up the PuTTY configuration, or the, the PuTTY application, we can load the settings from it and then just press the open and it should connect us automatically to our server. And as you can see, we're connected right now. So if I, if I uh, go to the root directory, you can see that we've got all of our files right here. So we are connected from our laptop um, using PuTTY in, and, um, and connecting up to that server. So. Yeah, that's how you do it uh, so that you have complete 100% terminal access to your server using PuTTY. Now, the other way that we can go is we can uh, use a software called Cyberduck. Let's see if we can find that. Uh, so if you open up Cyberduck, the website, you can go ahead and download this for your computer. 
And once it's downloaded, you can launch that CyberDuck software. And mm -hmm. Give it a moment to start up. Just wait for that. And here we are, CyberDuck. Uh, I have this setting, but I'm actually going to, oops, where am I? I'm going to delete this just so we can uh, start from scratch. I uh, can probably disconnect as well. Get to wait. You can hear us for the All right, starting from scratch, let's, uh, let's press the little plus button. And you want to make sure and change this to SFTP as the protocol. And we can name this dash window. Oh. Dash Ubuntu dash server. This is the name of the uh, the setup. For our server, we're going to paste in our uh, IP address. We want to make sure we're on port 22. And this is the username. We want this to be the same username that we used when setting up the SSH key. So that's laptop dash green d-o-w-s and then for the password we can leave it blank because we had it as blank if you come down here and look for the ssh key you can see that that one is already um, loaded up we just, so we don't need to search for it and that's one of the reasons that i like using the dot ssh directory is because cyberduck already knows that you're going to be keeping SSH keys in that directory, so it'll list them all here. But if you picked it, uh, left it somewhere like on your desktop, you can press the choose button and navigate to wherever you saved that private key. Okay, so we have all of our settings set up right here. We can just press the little X button, and now you have a connection that's available. You can just double click this, press allow, and it should work. Laptop. Windows, connect to server, fingerprint, allow, huh, it uh, didn't seem to open it up. Oh, I guess it worked. Um, so yeah, so this is your file structure. This little black and white icon is actually the list of all of your connections. I don't know why, but apparently when I uh, when I had to connect to this, it wanted to uh, refind that that um, that key file. But anyways, so from here, if you go to the root directory, you can see all of your your files here, and you can copy and drag and drop files on and off of the the server. So yeah, that's how you get it working both in a terminal and using the uh, the CyberDuck uh, SFTP client. So yeah, uh, if you have any questions, you can leave in the comment below and uh, I'll talk to you later in the next video.